Do you remember V0, the awesome AI code generator from Vassell? Then listen to me, because if you think V0 is the same tool you tried when it has been released, you're missing the boat. Because today I'm going to show you all features that 99% of people are overlooking. Features that can supercharge your coding, save your hours of headache, and help you build a whole project just with V0. And guess what? We cover it all in under six minutes. In case you missed V0, it's simply a AI code generator or AI code editor, you can say. But V0 is more prioritized to web development, so not coding in general. And I personally think that it is better. Better than Cursor, better than Bolt or New, or any other AI editor or AI generator out there. And that has two reasons. And the first thing is the awesome developer team. And if you follow them on X, then you see they are publishing updates every week or nearly every day. And that is awesome. And the second thing, and that is very, very, very crucial, is it is up to date. It is not like ChatGPT or also Cursor, because Cursor is just using the models like ChatGPT or Claude that are trained on data that is not up to date. It is from the past. And not with V0. V0 knows everything about Next.js, knows everything about React 19, for example. And that's why I think V0 is at the moment the best option when it comes to AI code generating or editing or yeah, helping. So when you start with V0, you have three possibilities. First, you just go with a simple prompt. And then we have this awesome feature that not a lot of people are using, but it is really awesome. For example, if you have a team that is using Figma, then you can import the design from Figma. But this comes not with the free plan so what else can you do you can just take your figma design take a screenshot of that and then you just drag and drop the screenshot in here and then you can just say build the ui from the screenshot you can go with that and that is awesome because it's free and now he's thinking and that's the process of v0 like you see on the right side the life generating code and on the left side you see what he's doing in general and then you just got it and let me tell you it looks exactly like the screenshot that I handed in. But now let's say I'm not happy with the result because that's happening. Maybe you were not too specific enough or it just made a mistake. And in case of that, you have two possibilities. And one problem a lot of people are doing right now is saying, let's start a new chat and try it again. You don't need to do that. There's an easier way. And not a lot of people are using that actually. Two options. The first is you just go into the code and you can just edit things here. So you can actually type things in here. You can add a link, for example, and you really have all of these code editor features. Yeah, we can just manipulate the code in here. And the second thing, and that is definitely the cooler thing is, we can go into the preview, we can click this small select button, and now we got the option to select anything. And let's say I'm just not happy with the color of, yeah, the skeletons here. I can just click them, say, make all the rectangles red. Just for example, and you see, he's on the left side, doing that for you. So you don't need to create a new chat every time. And you see, it's working perfectly. But let's say we're still unhappy with the result in general. Let's say we're just not feeling like the AI is doing what we want. For that, the V0 team built in a nice feature and that is called projects. So we can head over here to projects and we can click new project here on the top, give it a name, test for example, I'm pretty uncreative. And then we are presented with the project UI. And what we can do here, maybe you already know that from ChatGPT, but we can initialize a project. So it's like a directory for multiple chats, but we can give it more information. So what we can do is we can add sources like for example, a style guide or some rules that the AI needs to follow. If we want to go for bigger projects, we can set up environment variables and versatile connection, but I get to that in a minute. And we just can give the project or the AI in that case, just simple instructions like always choose Next.js 15 or always choose the pages router if your project is a little bit older. And with doing that and then chatting in this overlay, you can ensure that you're more happy with the results you will get. But yeah, as I already mentioned, how can we build full projects with V0. Let's say you don't want to generate just one UI block. Let's say you want to create a whole thing, a whole web app. And the first starting point for that is actually a project. So set up a project like that, give it every information that it needs. And the nice thing about V0 is it's implemented into the whole Vercel structure. Let's say you want to have Superbase as your backend. So what V0 will do if we say connect to Superbase, it will ask you for environment variables, and then you can just give them to V0 and V0 saves them in your Vercel dashboard and this project then can access Superbase. 
And V0 can not only generate UI, it also can read data, do fetch requests, call server actions and all that stuff. And that's why you sometimes can read on X, oh, I built this full app with V0. Because actually that's working, especially good with Superbase. And I will make a full video about that. So if you don't want to miss that, take your time now and click this red or black or white button, depending on your current location or theme you set it up. And then you're not going to miss that in the future. Okay, let's get back into the small UI we have generated here. And let's say you are finished now. You're happy with the result. What are you going to do now? Please don't say copy and paste everything because you could do that. You could just take it and copy and paste it. But let's say your project is a little bit more complex than that, or it is a whole project. Then there's a different way. And that is the button here on the top called add to codebase. Because when clicking that, I actually get a ShadCN link. And there's where it gets very, very cool because ShadCN has the CLI feature. So we can just copy that, go into a code, and then we can just paste what we have copied here. It's actually exactly creating that page.tsx file we have generated. Maybe we need to fix some imports or fix some placing, but that's all. It's getting all into our code. And that's very cool because copy and pasting feels a little bit wrong, right? That is the, definitely the cool way. But maybe you don't want it in your code. What you can do then is just click deploy. So you can just deploy to Versal here. Then you don't even need a code editor at all. But I'm not a fan of that. And if you're curious why I'm not a fan of that, take a look at that video here. Thank you for watching and have a great day. Bye bye.